What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 20 of the How to Code a Spigot plugin for a 1.15 series. It is coded red here, and I got an awesome video for you guys today, and it's about clicking on NPCs. Now, if you watched the last two of my videos and you saw about how to create an NPC and how to change their skin, you probably tried to use the player click entity event or whatever the heck it's called, and you noticed it did not work. And that's because NPCs are actually fake. These NPCs behind me, they're fake NPCs because they're sent with packets. They're not actually there. So to actually click on them, we need to use packets again. Yes, packets and messes in this video. And also what we'll be learning in this video is custom events. We're going to dabble on a little bit of custom events and we're going to jump into some injectors and getting that packet flow. And I'll show you what the plugin does. So basically all it really does is it registers our right click event and it's super custom. You guys can do it with whatever, whatever you guys want. So this guy right here, whenever I right click on him, it says sub decoded red, which definitely something you should do. And then when I right click on MD5 over here, it opens up a GUI for me, a little help GUI thanks to Inspiral. But yeah, we have this custom GUI here and a message being sent from this guy. And of course, like I said, it's all custom. You guys can do whatever the heck you want. I'm just going to show you how it works. And to understand how it works, we actually need to check this thing out over here. Now, I built this little rail thing to try and make you guys understand what is going on. And this is basically what we're dealing with. So we're be coding channels. We're going into the actual channel that connects the server and the player. And we're going to listen for the packets that we want to handle. And we want to handle the player click entity packet. So last two videos, we went over actual packets and sending them and stuff. We're not actually sending any packets this time. We are gathering them and it's a bit different. So this is the channel right here. As you see, you got these rails, these cards coming through and it's all the different represent all the different packets coming in and out. So what we're going to have is we're going to have this code over here, this packet reader code right here. And it's going to read the packets as they come in and as they come out. And if it's the packet that we want to handle, we do something to it. Yep, and that's what we're gonna do. And so enough looking at carts and shit, and let's actually code it. Hop into your code from last time if you have have it, and go ahead and uh, we're gonna do something first. Right click on the package, and we're gonna create another package. Go to new package, and this one's gonna be an events package. So I'm gonna have the same name, just do dot events, and I'm gonna throw in our join event in there as well. Press OK. So the first thing I want to do, this video is jam packed with a lot of stuff. First thing I want to do is go ahead and create our custom event. So I'm going to right click on our new package, go to class. This one's going to call the right click NPC. So this is our custom event class. And I say that and probably confuse what I mean by that. And really what it does is it extends event and we're done. That's all it does. <laughs> so it's going to extend event and we go ahead and import the methods that we don't have yet. And that right there is how you create a custom event. And that's all you have to do. I'm not even kidding. We will do more stuff with this class, but when you create a custom event, just go ahead and name something, whatever, right click NPC, left click NPC and extend the event. And you created a custom event. What you put in here is what the event methods has. So if we put in a method that says get player, we need to return player get NPC, return NPC. This is all up to you guys. I will put more stuff in here, obviously, because we're going to be handling with it. But that's all you need to create a custom event. And then we actually need to call the event somewhere. So in our packet reader, we will call the event with bucket dot get plugin manager dot call event. And then that will run the event. So what we're going to do instead is actually extend event and we're typing implements cancelable. And y'all know what cancelable is. It's the dot is cancelable. I'll show you guys real quick. Implement events. And you'll right here. So is cancelable, set cancelable. It's all the events have these. It's just a cancel event. And no other event will run, whatever, blah, blah. And then, so the first thing we want to do is actually create the player and NPC. So we're typing private final player. And we'll call it player private final entity player NPC. And then the private boolean is canceled. 
go ahead and import those and you will get a little error message because we need to put it in a constructor there's our final right here so that means we need to initialize them in the constructor so public right click npc we need to pass in the player player and the entity player npc and we're set this dot player equal to player and then this dot npc equal to npc once we have that constructor done we can go ahead and handle this is cancelled what i mean by that is uh let's remove these comments so if someone runs the method is cancelled we're not going to return false we're going to return the actual data type is cancelled and if someone runs the method set cancelled we want to set that cancel to wherever the argument is so we're going to say is cancelled equals the arg and make sure you spell cancelled wrong all right <laughs> is cancelled equals the argument finally let's add in the methods that we want to handle the uh, public player get player and we'll return player here and then the public entity player get npc and we're going to return npc here now this confuses you i will go over this well this is about to make more sense later in the video but uh, basically we're just creating an event here so every event the player interact event has all these methods inside that event and that's what these methods are we're creating them right here we're creating the get player returning player we're creating the get npc and we're returning npc one thing that's very important that we must do and you have to do this for every single event is uh, do the handles. So private static final handler list and we'll capitalize handlers equals a new handler list. And when you go down here to this get handlers and instead of returning null, let's return that handlers. And then we're going to need another method, copy that same method. And this one's going to be a static one and get handler list and then just like that our class is done so this is all we need to do for our custom event right there and the handlers this stuff is required when you create an event you must have these two methods and this final up right, right up here you must have that when you create an event and then the other things are all kind of just custom we this is custom right here we want a cancelable we want an npc and we want a player it's all custom stuff but how do we call this event? How does this event actually work? And that's what I'm going to show you guys next. So let's hop into our main package here. Let's right click on it, go to new class, and let's create a class called Packet Reader. Press finish. So the Packet Reader class this is going to have four different methods on there two of which are pretty important and uh, yeah so the first thing we want to type is the channel 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 go ahead and import channel and this is going to be the io.netty channel make sure you import that one and the next thing you want to do is <laughs> have a hash map and I know a lot of people on my discord always call, they call me the hash map man and that's just because hash maps are the best thing in the world you heard it here first all right guys We'll create a hash map and this hash map is going to hold a UUID and a channel and I'm creating this hash map mainly because I want multiple players to work now you could do a different way but I think it's just hash maps are so easy I just code them so often that they're just so easy to me so the reason why we're going to have this hash map right up here that's holding the channel we're going to hold the player's UUID and we're going to hold their channel whatever channel they're in because each channel is different because the channels, like I said before, are communication between the player and the server. So between CMAX and the server, between ND5 and the server, every single player has a different channel. The first method we want to create is the public void inject. And we're going to pass in a player here. We want to inject a player to this whole channel thing. We want to make it so they can read these packets that are coming in and out. Go ahead and import player. And the first thing you want to type is craft player. 
craft player equals craft player craft uh, player <laughs> so we're creating an nms of a player and we dealt with nms before like i said it's only going to work in 1.15 or it'll only work in whatever version you're running right now in your eclipse if you're running 1.14 it's going to import a 1.14 version of it and i'll get into another video how to make this work with all versions soon so we're going to create an nms of our player we're, cre we're creating a craft player and we want, what we want to say is channel equals craft player dot get handle dot player connection dot network network manager dot channel we want to set this channel to our player let me zoom in for you guys Set that channel to this channel and then we're going to deal with some hash maps real quick we're going to say channels dot put and what are we going to put in here we're putting the player dot get unique id and we're putting the channel in there like I said, each player is going to have their own channel, so that's why we're put into a hash map. The next thing we want to do is a quick if statement. If the channel dot pipeline dot get, and we're getting the packet injector. So if this is not null, which that means they actually have packets going through and out, that means they're already in it. Go ahead and return. So if the channel dot pipeline so this is a really the same thing. Channel holds a lot of stuff, and we're just getting this pipeline that holds all the information. And we want to get not a packy, a packet. We want to get the packet ejector, and we want to check if it's not null. If it's not null, that means they're already in it. If it's null, that means we want to do something. So under here, under this if statement, means it's null. So we want to say, um. Alright, so we're going to do this. I'm going to show you guys some code real quick, and then we're going to update it later to better, co better code, better ways to do it. And I'm just doing it like this so you guys can really see what I mean. So after. So we're going to get the decoder. And the arg1 will be the same thing as we earlier, packet injector. And the third thing is going to be a new message to message decoder. And we're passing in a packet and they're putting another one of these little less than greater than signs. And we're putting a question mark in there. And then outside of those uh, greater thans, put one of those and then curly brace and import. What did I do here? Message. Start your new message to message decoder. Nope. All right. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So then we're going to put this, that. Add, there we go. All right, sorry. Let's go ahead and I'll redo that for you guys. So uh, you're going to have to put at the end, it's cur cur like, uh, like a get configuration section. Y'all handled that before. It's going to be a curly brace and then a premises and then a semicolon to cancel it all out. It's kind of like a for each loop right here. And then we're going to hover over this and you'll see the add unimplemented methods. So we're add this method right here. And this is all the information that's going to go through this channel. And this is what we want to do with it. Now it's, this is really, really, really important. Uh, we don't care about this at all. That doesn't matter. Uh, we could call it channel, I guess. doesn't really matter. This is very important. The packet was called this packet. And this right here is, really really important let's go ahead and just call it arg and the first thing you want to do may make sure you do this type in arg dot add packet I keep spelling packet wrong this dang keyboard I'm not used to it all right so why is that important if you do not add the packet 
to this list, this object list, then any other time you're dealing with this packet, it's not going to work. Only your event will work. Every single event in API will break. The only event that will work is yours. So you have to make, make sure you add the packet to the list. Once you add the packet to the list, we can go ahead and do some stuff with it. And that's our read channel. So we're going to go in and, uh, I mean, read packet. So let's go ahead and create a new method. This method is going to be called read packet. Public void read packet. And we're passing a player player. And then the packet question mark packet. And I'm not sure if I explained this. This right here basically means any packet we're passing in and it doesn't really matter. We don't know what packet it is. It can be any packet packet dot click entity packet walk packet. Look, does not matter if it's a packet. We want it. That's the same thing up here, whatever packet, whatever packet. So once we add the org dot add packets, we want to do read packet player packet. Once we add it to the list, we want to read it. And the read is our method right here. So what do you want to say? We want to say if packet dot get class dot get simplified simple name dot equals ignore case in case you spell something wrong and we're going to type in packet play in use entity. That right here is the packet that handles when you click on an entity. It doesn't matter if it's NPC, an armor stand, a mine cart, an item frame. Whenever you click on an entity, this packet is called right here. So we want to do a few things before we can do anything else. First thing we want to do is say, ooh, ooh, before we can go on, we need to do something else. Let's create another method real quick private object get value object instance string name all right so this read packet right here is going to read every single packet we send in because right here every single packet that's going in between the player and the server it's going to be sent into this method and we're checking if it equals this play in use entity. If it equals this, this right here, this packet, then we want to go ahead and see if they're right clicking, see if they're punching, see if they're using their offhand on hand. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong here. So we want to get some values. Now, typically if you type in packet dot, you see there's a dot a dot B and there's also a dot C dot D dot E, whatever. And, I don't know what these things mean. I don't think if someone memorized what these things mean, I'm really impressed because they mean something different for every single packet. So usually what I do is I code this right here, this get value method, and then I just paste them all into the console. I run it, run this, this, whatever, run this program, paste all the dot a, dot b, dot c, dot e, whatever into the console. And I see what they equal and then I handle it. But you guys are lucky because I already know what they handle for this thing. So uh, let's go ahead and create this get value. Get value is going to have an object. It's called result. I'm going to set equal to null. It's going to be a try and catch because some errors can happen with this. We're going to catch the exception E. We're going to do E .print stack trace just in case. And then after this try and catch, we're going to return result. And let's remove our other return. So what are we putting in this try and catch? What do I mean by get value? I already told you guys it's packet.a.b, whatever. We want to go into that class, the packet class, and we want to get the name of it and then get out of the class. It's kind of, it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird. I remember in my last video, I talked about like kind of like a hacky way. It's not really hacking. It's kind of going into the class illegally and then getting a value and then leaving it. So what we need to do, I'll show you field field 
instance.getClass. And remember, our instance is the packet. This is our packet. So we're getting into the class, the packet class, and we're saying dot get declared field. Uh, declared field, and we're getting the name. Go ahead and import field. And uh, the import for field, I always forget this one. It is a uh, reflect, that's what it is. That's right. The reflect. Java.lang reflect dot field. All right, so I should probably explain what I'm gonna do here. Uh, before we finish the method, let me just show you real quick. So we're gonna say in this if statement up here, we're gonna say if get value, and we're getting the value of the packet, and we're getting action dot to string dot equals ignore case attack, we're gonna return. So we're gonna get the value of the action. We're going into this packet class and we're seeing what action equals. If they are attacking, if they are like punching something, or they're left, if they're left clicking, we don't wanna handle them. We only wanna handle the NPCs when they're right clicking. Of course, it's up to you. If you wanna handle attack, go ahead and write some code for it. But I only wanna handle it when they are interacting with it. So what does this get value do? It's passing in a packet, it's passing in this action, and we're going into here and we're get, actually getting it. So we're getting the packet class and we're passing in action here. And we're saying, once we have the field, we're saying field.set accessibility to true. We're set result equal to field.get, and we're getting the packet. And then we're saying field dot set accessibility to false. And boom, it's done. So we're getting, we're going into this class. We're going into this class, getting the Clara field. We're setting it to true. And we're setting the true so we're able to get this right here. We're getting the instance. Once we set the true and we get the instance, we want to set it back to false and get the heck out of there and return it. All right. So this is, method is done right here. Now this if statement will actually work. Go ahead and copy it. We're gonna say this like four times. And it's really important that we say it four times and I'll explain in a second. So we're gonna get the action of attack and then we're getting not the action, but the D, the D class. And D for NPCs, it took me a little bit to uh, get this going. It means the hand. So if it equals off hand, we don't wanna handle it. I'm going to paste it one more time, and we're saying action, and if it equals not attack, but interact, uh, interact, underscore, act. So there's multiple <laughs> attacks, multiple actions. One more, and this last one is the one that we're actually going to be handling, and this is the actual interact. And we're gonna say this, and we're gonna return this, get rid of this return. So why did I just do all this? Whenever you click on something, it's gonna run multiple times. It's gonna run for what hand you clicked on with. It's gonna run for interacting at or interacting with it. It's gonna run if you attack it. So if I didn't have this if statement right here, if this was gone, this right here, this interact if will run twice. It's gonna run for the off hand. It's gonna run for the main hand. So we have to make sure we return there. But now that we know we're only using it in our main hand, right click, we can go ahead and handle this right here. So what do we want to say? Uh, actually, let's go above it real quick. We want to say int ID equals cast of int to get value packet A. And now inside, Inside this if, we want to say for entity player, and this would be NPC, NPC dot get NPCs. Go ahead and import all that. So we're going to 
create a for loop and we're going to create an NPC and we're setting it to npcs.getNPCs. This right here is from our old code, our old NPC class. I'll open it up real quick for you guys. This is our NPC class and we're basically just going to get, we're getting this list right here where we held all our NPCs. So we want to get all the NPCs that we've created on our server and we want to check if the NPC.getID equals the ID. And what this ID is up here, what the packet.get value A, A returns obviously the NPC ID. So if the ID that we're clicking on, whether it's an armor stand, an NPC, if the ID returns to something that's in our list up here, then let's go ahead and it's our thing. I'm trying to make that make sense. <laughs> so when I click, when I click on this on this cart right here, this is, isn't in my, it's running. My method's running right here, but it's not a thing that's in my list. When I click on this NPC, the ID for this entity is in my list, so it's gonna run. And what it's gonna run, it's going to run our bucket dot get plugin manager call event new right click NPC player NPC. Go ahead and import right click NPC. And that is right there, is that's how you call a custom event. So we know the player's clicking on NPC. We know they're interacting right hand. We know that the NPC they're clicking on is in our list. So we can go ahead and call that event. We're calling the custom event we made. But before we can actually call it, go ahead and copy this. And we have to do it a certain way. You can't just call the event here because you'll get a thread exception to be multiple threads running at the same time so what you need to do is type in bucket dot get scheduler dot schedule and it's a delayed task it's a schedule sync delay task and we're typing main dot get plugin and then main dot class and then this is going to be new runnable and we don't need that new runnable. All right, yeah, like that. And then we're going to need to implement that method, the run. All right. And then in here, all right, boom, just like that. So we're going to create a uh, schedule. We're creating a runnable here. And we're going to schedule it delayed. And we're going to pass in right after this curly brace. We're going to pass in a zero. If we want it to start instantly. And we're going to run this call event. And like I said, we're doing this because if you don't put it in a runnable, you're going to get an error because of multiple threads running at the same time. So to get around this, we will use the runnable. Because with a runnable, you're able to run multiple threads. So we're going to get this runnable and we're going to run this right here. And it's only going to run one time. And just to make sure, actually, no, it's only going to run one time because it's a scheduled delay task. It's not a repeating task. And that is pretty much it. And that's right there. If we run this code, it would work perfectly fine. Uh, there is one more thing I want to go ahead and put in, and that is an uninject. So we have an inject. What about an public void uninject? Pass in a player player. And what do we want to uninject? First off, we're going to get that channel. Channel equals channels, the hash map. Dot get player. Dot get unique ID. And we're saying if that channel dot pipeline dot get, and we're getting that packet injector. And if that does not equal null, that means they have a channel. And we can say channel dot pipeline dot remove and removing the packet injector so like I said we're running this method right here the in inject whenever they join the server 
And we're, whenever they leave the server, we're going to run this uninject because we don't want, care about them seeing packets because they're not on the server. And we will go back to this code in a second to show you guys a better way of doing it. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't stop the video now because this is not the best way to do it. There is a much, much better way to optimize this whole thing. And we will go over that in a second. And then uh, go ahead in here, repack it. Just so we can see what's going on, do system.out.println, print ln. And we're going to say packet greater than greater than plus packet. And we're putting it here because I just want to show you guys what the packets look like. And then once we have all this good to go, we will need to hop into our join class. And whenever someone joins the server, we will need to add that packet to them. So we're going to say packets reader reader equals new packet reader and we'll say reader and we spell packet wrong what the heck reader dot inject and we're injecting the event dot get player and then real quick we we'll create the add event handler public void on quit player quit event and then similarly we're going to just copy this real quick paste it in and instead of in injecting we are going to uninject the player and I know the video is running up like 32 minutes right now but uh, we're almost done we're very very close and then now that we have that, we will need to hop into our main class real quick before we can get started. And we need to say in the on enable, we need to register. Oh crap. Okay. Yeah. We need to create the actual event class itself, but uh, we can go ahead in the on enable and we're going to say if bucket dot get online players dot is empty. So what I'm saying here, if when, this is just so the server reloads fine. When we reload the server, if there's still players on the server, let's go ahead and create a for loop for player, player, bucket, dot get online players. And we're going to say the same thing as earlier. Dang. The uh, packet. So this is the on enable. Whenever we reload the server, if there's still people on the server, let's go ahead and make sure we send them those packets, the packet injector, so they're able to click the NPC still. And then similarly, when the server is shutting down, we want to do the same thing. Copy this for loop. And the on disable. If there's players still on the server when the server is shutting down, instead of injecting them, we want to uninject them. And boom, we are done. So that is how you handle the injections and uninjections. We will, however, actually need to create the event itself. And we'll go ahead and right click on this package. Like I said, we're really, really close. Go ahead and name this click NPC. So it'll be implements listener. Go ahead, import listener at event handler public void on click this is going to be the right click npc event go ahead and import those and you see right there the right click npc this is a custom event that we made you see it's all coming now it's all coming together it's all full circle right here it's all coming together so this is our event class that uses our custom event and in here uh just for now we can say we can say player player equals event dot get player and we can say player dot send message did it work question mark 
and go into our main and all we have to do now is register this instead of join it will be the click npc go ahead and import that all right now we are officially done i'm gonna go ahead and import this plugin i'm gonna export the plugin to my server jar file and custom npc finish and i'll be right back when the server's all started up and working All right, before we hop into the server, let's make sure that uh, this is fixed. My bad, be earlier. If you typed in get handlers list, make sure it says get handler list because this is what it uh, should look like, get handler list. I will cause an error if it's not like this. And then um, actually, I recommend probably not starting your server yet and just watching the video because I don't know, might, if you don't have a good computer, uh, you might crash. So in this packet reader, we threw in this right here the system that out print line and I've put this in here because I want to show you guys all the different packets that are sent every freaking second of the server uh, if you don't want your server to crash probably remove this line but without further ado let me hop into my server and instantly you start seeing let me throw this over here so instantly this is my console see all those packets these are all the packets being sent when i walk run jump whatever all these different packets are being sent so when i type in create npc which is our command we had from last video it creates this npc here and when i right click on the npc you'll see a little message did it work and you can see in chat it says the console it says packet play in use entity pretty awesome we did it we created a custom event we created the packet injection and everything and there's just one more thing before I can end this video and I cannot I don't feel good enough having this code because as you can see our channel is reading every single packet known to man it's reading the packet in position packet look packet entity action pent all these all these packets and all our plugin does is handle one of them now you can see where I'm going here, this is going to cause some lag on your server if you have 100 players and every single player is reading every single packet that's being sent. So we want to change this. Don't end the video yet. We're going to remove this line because we don't care about it anymore. And we're going to change this right here, the injection, the actual injection. And I spent a long time working on this, and I really want to make a perk for you guys. We don't want to send every single packet. This question mark means I don't care what packet it is, we're sending it. No, we're not doing that. So remove this line right here. So inside the message to message decoder, what we want to put is packet play in use entity. I only remove that. I only want to see this packet. I don't care about any other packet. I only want to see this one. And of course, since we change this top, we will need to change this method down here. And so instead of packet question mark, erase this and put packet play and use entity. Go ahead and import those and it will work. I'll move this down the line. So if you didn't see what I did there, I removed the question mark, I put in packet play and use, packet play and use, and now you will see that the only packet that is being sent to this read packet method is the packet play and use. It's the only one we care about. We don't care if they're looking to the left, or looking to the right, if they're walking on a slab. We do not care. We only care about this one packet. If you do it this way, I'm telling you right now, you would kill the lag by 100%. Um, I ran the code earlier on a timings and it caused like 3.5% of lag on the server. And then I change it to this and this causes 0.05% lag, which is a normal event lag. Actually, I don't even think this showed up on the server to be honest. So now if I run the server, even if we keep, if I go ahead and I put this system.out.print line, if I put this back in here, 
just for shits and giggles, let's do export. Let's export this and reload the server. So if I join back in, and sorry, I can't see. So if I join back in the server, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to my console because you see my IP, but you'll see that there are no longer messages are being sent. It'll only be sent if I do create an NPC. If I right click on this NPC, it'll only be sent then. And let's see what's going on here. There we go. So it's only going to be sent then when I click on this NPC. When I click on this NPC, then this, this packet is going to be sent. And that's what we want to handle with. We only want to handle this packet, nothing else. And that's pretty much all I want to show you guys uh, before I end the video. Let me go make sure everything looks good. We can go back over it real quick. So this packet class, we're going to inject the player whenever they join the server. And then when they leave the server, we have to make sure we uninject them from it. Like injection pack injector. And then this is the read packet where we can read the actual thing that's going on. And I left this packet question mark in here. God forbid something that goes wrong. It doesn't matter. Just leave it in there. But we only want to handle this packet when they're interacting and they're right clicking. And when they, it does, we're going to call this event. And what that event is, is this right click NPC event. And it's our custom event that we created right here and when it calls this event of course it's going to trigger any class that extends that has this event in it and it's going to be right here so in what i showed you earlier when i created the npc oh wait i removed the plugin sorry when i created that npc and i right clicked to open up a gui i put that all in here and really you can do whatever you want uh what i did do what i'll show you real quick i said if event dot get npc dot get name dot equals ignore case so i said if my npc has a name of cmax i made it send a message and then otherwise i made it open up a gui so that was my code for the beginning of the episode beginning series I, I made it send a message, and I, if it didn't have the name of CMAX, I made it just send a GUI. And the GUI I sent was my help GUI for my advanced help plugin. Uh, this right here is all custom. You guys can do whatever the heck you want here. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's probably my longest video yet. Uh, I do want to keep going on this NPC stuff because it's really fun to use, and I probably think you guys want to go over actually saving this NPC when the server shuts down and stuff like that. So I'll probably make that next video. I might do particles next video. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, before I end it, let me just say, go back into the join class and probably let's add this packet reader before this other stuff. And then you should be good to go. Now reloading the server and stuff might break things. And that's why we created that hash map to actually make sure it doesn't break. So you might have to play around with it a little bit. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I'm actually, if you did follow along in this 40 plus minute long video, I'm uh, really proud of you guys. Pat yourself on the back because you guys did something that no one else does. Usually people just grab the API, don't even know how the API works, and they use it. Y'all actually created a right-click NPC custom event using packets, and that is just awesome. Uh, I really guys hope, hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, go ahead, like, subscribe, join my Discord if you need help. Also, all the code for this plugin is on GitHub if you are a patron. It's $3 to see all the code. Thank you guys again. I'll see you guys next time.